Welcome to the Bone Zone, guys. We're just going to blow this skull really quick. It's the superior view. Uh, let's see if we can keep up. You got your crystagalli, cribiform plate, anterior clinoid process, posterior clinoid process, cell turcica, optic canal. This is your foramen lacerum, your foramen ovale, foramen spinosum, foramen rotundum. Down here is your superior orbital fissure. You've got, like I said, lacerum, which is right next to your carotid groove, which opens up into the carotid canal. You got your foramen magnum, your jugular foramen, and your foramen of the hypoglossal nerve. So I hope you guys got all that, and we'll see you next time. Just kidding. We're going to just go through this a little slower. I'll actually use my script. So let's see. First thing, we'll start with the hypoglossal canal, which is going to be within the foramen magnum on the lateral portion. Let's see if we can turn this so you can see. It's actually right there and that's basically important because you've got your hypoglossal nerve traveling through that that's CN12 for those of you who don't know your sulcus for your sigmoid sinus should run right along here somewhere uh, and that's the S-shaped groove ending at the jugular foramen so it should come over here next let's see we've got our we don't need to know any of these. Uh, your internal acoustic meatus, which basically transmits your uh, CN8 and CN7, just one one of the branches of your CN7 corded tympani, and it should be right there. And then your carotid canal, as I mentioned, is going to be next to your foramen lacerum. So if we turn the skull up, you'll be able to see your lacerum right there, which is the most medial foramen. And then, I guess it's clear on this side, you have your foramen, and then your groove, which leads to the canal, which the canal is better seen on the posterior aspect of the skull. So basically just know the carotid groove is right next to the lacerum, and eventually it does open up into the carotid canal. Moving on, uh, we said the foramen lacerum, it's often mistaken for the carotid canal, so don't make that mistake. Your carotid canal transmits your internal carotid artery, uh, we also have your jugular fossa, which is right there, also on this side. And what's important about that is it transmits your jugular vein and CN 9, 10, 9, 10, and 11, which is your glossopharyngeal is 9, your vagus is 10, and your accessory is 11. So moving on, we have our... See, our cella tersica, which is the fossa for the pituitary gland. Uh, for all intents and purposes, I would say it's the cella tersica just because that's what's listed on your osteology guide. And that's just right here. It looks like a uh, saddle, which cella tersica means Turkish saddle, which I'm sure all of you know. Um, yeah, other than that, you got your clinoid processes, and these are important because they're the attachment for your cerebellar tentorium and the cellar diaphragm. So that would be your posterior clinoid, which would be these two. It's a little broken on this guy. But it's basically in the posterior aspect of your cella tersica. And whereas your anterior clinoid processes are the anterior attachment for the cerebellar tentorium. Oh, did I say that right? Yeah, so it's basically your cerebellar tentorium and your cellar diaphragm. So anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior. And then you've got your optic canals. And that's, that's just obvious because that's where your optic chiasm is going to be. And then your pituitary is going to dive through that. And this transmits your optic nerve, which is CN2, and your ophthalmic artery. Moving on, we have our superior orbital fissure, which I mentioned. Let's see if we can get a better view of it. If you look at this angle, if your optic canal is right there, your superior orbital fissure is going to be down here. And it's not really like a hole, like everything else is pretty circular or oval shaped. It's more of just the space between some bones that allows you to transmit certain things. So you have a superior and an inferior orbital fissure, but your inferior orbital fissure is better viewed from the posterior aspect. So what's important about the superior orbital fissure is that it transmits your oculomotor nerve, which is CN3, your trochlear and abducent, ner abducent nerve, which is uh, 4 and 6, and so you can remember that because those three are the ones that control your movement for your eyes. 
And then you've also got the ophthalmic division of your trigeminal nerve, which is five. So basically, it's, it's all in order, three, four, five, and six. Now you also have your foramen rotundum, which, if I'm not mistaken, should be this right below. So if we proceed from your optic canal, a little lateral and posterior will be, an inferior, sorry, inferior will be your su superior orbital fissure, and then posterior and a little more inferior is going to be your foramen rotundum. So foramen rotundum is important because it transmits the maxillary division of your trigeminal nerve, which is V2. And then moving on, moving further back, is going to be your foramen ovale. So the way I think about the foramen ovale is that it's transmitting something that's cylindrical, a nerve or a vessel, but it's cut at, uh, on an oblique section, which is why you get an oval. If any of you have done conic sections before, it's the same kind of concept. And why this is important is that if the nerve and vessels are moving forward, then you know where it's going, and that kind of gives you a clue as to what transmits through there. So the foramen ovale, it's an oval, and it transmits the mandibular division of your trigeminal nerve, V3. So mandible, where's your mandible? If we take a look at this, and you're coming, so your ovale is right, that's, yeah, right there. And if it's coming out and forward, your mandible is going to be right here. So it's coming out and forward to that. So other than your V3, you've also got your accessory meningeal artery and preganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the glossopharyngeal nerve, which uh, ends up at the otic ganglion. So if you, if you look at your foramen ovale in a cadaver and you, follow, and you look right by the opening, you should see a flattening of nerves, which is the otic ganglion. Uh, moving on, there's the foramen spinosum. So spinosum, I think of it as spiny. It's, it's spiny and small. So if we follow, if that's your ovale, that tiny little guy is your spinosum. On this side, it's barely separated, but you have your ovale and then your spinosum. So the spinosum is important because it transmits your meningeal nerve and your middle meningeal artery. And if you remember, your middle meningeal artery goes straight up to the weakest and thinnest part, portion of your skull, which is where four bones come together, called your terion spelled with a P at the beginning, a silent P. Uh, so terion is where your middle meningeal goes, and that's where if you get hit by a baseball bat for saying something mean about Zane and Lab, that's where you would get a subdural hematoma. But that would never happen, because no one would say anything mean about Zane. Anyway, moving What's on. What say, boy? <laughs> moving on, uh, you've got your perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, which is actually on the inferior portion of the ethmoid bone, so we won't go through that. Your cribiform plate, where you can see a bunch of holes, that's for CN1, which is your olfactory nerve, which comes out of your olfactory bulb, which, which sits in that portion of the cribiform plate. And then you've got your crista galli, which is this thing right here. And that's just, I, I think it's Latin for coxcomb, which is the thing on top of a, a male chicken's head. So that's the anterior attachment of the false cerebri. Other than that, there's really nothing. So hopefully that video is helpful, and I hope you guys enjoyed the newest installment of The Bone Zone.